shout for the Lord, let's shout for Jesus. He is our reward, He is our praise, He is our song. We lift our voice, we raise our For my face to go. Wait. So if you put my face on 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 anything, I could sue you. No. Nope. Yes, you could. Okay. Yes, I can. Because if you watch porn enough. Sue. If you watch sue. porn enough. All right, I will sue and I will win because I have better lawyers than you for sure. For sure. Oh, Jesus cried out. And Jesus cried. He said, Oh. Speak the things which we have heard and seen. 
seen. I cannot but speak the things which I have heard and seen. I, I cannot but go about preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified to you. I cannot go about but give up, giving up of myself and, 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 be, and be, be challenged by people who do wicked things who touch me and do things that are evil in the, in the sight of God. And, and you don't think that God is angry with the wicked every day like the scripture says? You don't think God is angry with the wicked? Oh, the Bible says in, the, in, in Psalms chapter 7, verse 11, it says that God is a just judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. If they do not turn back, the Bible says God will bend his bow. He will make him ready. Oh, he will sharpen his sword. He will prepare for himself instruments of death. So he will turn his arrows into fiery shafts, it says, if you don't turn back. But behold, the wicked brings forth trouble, it says. Oh, don't have that heart in you. 
The Bible says that, that the wicked will be filled with evil. Oh, but no great trouble will overtake the righteous. Proverbs 12, 21. No great trouble overtakes the righteous, but the wicked will be stuffed full with evil. That's why God's going to sit the wicked down in a chair and start stuffing them full of evil. Here, you want to give evil out, here's your evil. It comes right back upon you tenfold. That's the way of God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 31, it says, if you reject wisdom when she cries out, you do not turn at her rebuke. It says that you will eat the fruit of your own ways. You'll be filled to the full with your own fancies, it says. Oh, it says, for the complacency of fools, for the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me, wisdom says, will dwell safely, secure from the fear of evil. You need to be secure from the fear of evil. That's, you got to be under the blood of Jesus. You gotta be. You gotta be in covenant with Him. You gotta. You gotta humble yourself and cry out and start seeing things from the from the perspective of everlasting, the everlasting kingdom. You know, the Bible says in Corinthians four eighteen. It says you don't look to the things that are temporary. It says look to the things that are eternal. But what you can see is temporary. What you cannot see is eternal. What you can't see. Are you without sin? Are you without I, I sin? I repented of my sins. And you're, are you if, without if sin? You're coming against the gospel. You have. You are in your without sin. sin. Okay. All have right. sin, but but not all continue on in sin. Not all continue on in sin. If you continue in sin, you're of the devil. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said to be ye holy, for I am holy. You know, in First Thessalonians chapter four, it says, "This is the will of God, your sanctification, that you would abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you would learn how to possess his own vessel of sanctification and honor, not in not in passion and lust like the heathen who do not know God, for God is the avenger of all such. We forewarn you and testify. For for we did not who are not called to uncleanness, but to holiness." Anybody who rejects this rejects not man, but God, who has given us of his Holy Spirit. Oh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that you were bought with the price. You need to honor God with your body and your spirit, which are his. He bought you with this, with this blood of his, of his cross and, it, and the amazing grace of his power. And now he commands you to go and, and sin no more. John 8, 11 and John 5, 14. Lest the worst thing come upon you. You know, you, know, you don't understand. You don't understand the perils of sin. You don't understand how much God's been holding back the destruction that is due in your, your deeds. Oh, it's terrifying when I think about all the wicked, all the things I deserve because of my sin. Oh, the Bible says in, in Ezekiel chapter 18 that if a wicked man turns from his wickedness to righteousness, none of his wickedness will be remembered. That's the power of the cross. You know what? But he also said this in that chapter. He said, but if a righteous man turns from his righteousness back to wickedness, none of his righteousness will be remembered. Oh, and the people had a problem with that one. He said, oh, your way is not fair, God. Your way is not fair. And, did, and God replied to the prophet Ezekiel and said, is it not your way that's not fair? Is it my way that's, that's true? Because look, as much as God is serious about evil, if you continue at any point in evil or you turn back to evil, then God will erase your name from the book of life. He'll blot your name out. He'll, he'll cast your name out as evil. He'll say, I never knew you. Oh, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. As it's, it's, it's terrifying as that is about God's character, it's amazing. It's the other side is how much grace he's willing to give you because of Jesus Christ. I mean, you can do wickedly. All this time you've been living wickedly. And you turn from your sin to trust Christ. And God is telling you that he's willing to blot it all out and make it like you've never sinned. He's willing to make you a new creation. He's willing to make you innocent again. He's willing to make you uh, pure in his sight. And what an amazing thing that God is offering you today. Well, the Bible says that God does before you life and death. Don't choose death anymore. Choose life. For as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Who else is there to serve? What else are you going to serve in these last days? Oh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, God says you're, you're a slave of one of two things. You're, you're a slave of sin that leads to death, but you're a slave of obedience under righteousness. Under righteousness. Oh, turn to the living God. Trust in Jesus. The voice of the Lord from the temple, the voice of the Lord like a thunder, the voice of the Lord bringing vengeance. Nations will bow before you, peoples and tongues will adore you, singing glory.
Go to church. Go to church won't help you there. Go to church. Going to church won't make you a Christian or okay with God any more than going to Burger King will make you a Whopper. Or going to McDonald's will make you a Big Mac. Or going into a garage will make you a car. Going to a building every week won't help you one bit unless you repent. Unless you give up your sin. Here's a newsflash. Church is not made for sinners. It's made for saints. The saints of God is who the church is made for. The church in the Greek is ecclesia. is the congregation of the righteous. The called out ones. I love Jesus. Don't touch me. You don't love Jesus and you don't love me. You don't even love yourself. If you love yourself, you stop being a sinner. And if you love other people, you stop being a sinner too. If you love God, you stop being a sinner too. If you're a sinner, you don't love anybody. You don't even love yourself. You do love your sin though, but that's not a person, that's a thing. That's something a person commits. But as long as you love your sin, you hate God. As long as you love your sin, you're living for yourself. You're not living for Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and rose again. Now think about this for a second. This is the Son of God, manifested in the flesh, came down from the glories of heaven, lived a perfect sinless life for about 33 years, performed many miracles, signs, and wonders, attesting to the fact that He's the Son of God and God the Son of the flesh. He allowed His own creation, people not much different than you, He allowed His own creation to beat Him and bruise Him and crucify Him on a piece of wood that he was the creator of. He did his all. He didn't have to do this. He could have stayed up in heaven. He could have called out legions of angels. He could have destroyed the wicked with one word out of his mouth. But for your sake, for the sake of sinners, for the sake of the ungodly, he died for you. That you might have eternal life. That you might be right with God the Father. That you might be reconciled back into a right relationship with God. And yet most of you, you spit in his face every single day. You trample his blood on the foot, so to speak. Because you go on in your sin and you reject his grace. You reject his love. You reject his mercy. You reject his forgiveness. Because you go on in the very things that forbid God from giving you pardon, from giving you forgiveness and love and grace and mercy. Now most sinners, they know about the quote-unquote love of God. They know about the benevolent love of God. They say, well, God loves me unconditionally. God loves everyone. And that's true to a point. That's true to a point. God loves everyone in this sense. That He wants every one of you to be saved. He wants none of you to perish, and he sent Jesus Christ to die for every single one of you. But he does not love everyone in this sense. That he loves fornicators in their fornication, he loves drunkards in their drunkenness, that he loves immodestly dressed people in their immodesty, that he loves liars in their lying, covetous in their covetousness. God is angry with the wicked every day. God is not pleased with you if you're a sinner. Christ is not your homeboy if you're a sinner or your friend. You're an enemy of God if you're a sinner. You need Jesus Christ. You need to stop your sin. Jesus said in John 14, 21, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. So it's a relational kind of love that God only has 
for those who have his commandments and keep them. Don't be a fool and think the God of the whole universe, the holy and righteous God, and for everything you see, is going to love you or be pleased with you while you're rebelling against him every single day in thought, word, and deed. Don't be deluded. It'd be like a judge in this world or a righteous cop in this world loving those who continue to break the law. Doesn't work that way. You continue to break the law of God, God will give you what you deserve on Judgment Day. No, I will not shut up. You will get what you deserve on Judgment Day if you don't repent. That's not what I want for you. That's not what God wants for you. But that's what you will get. God is just. God is holy. God is good. God is righteous. And He's going to punish evildoers. That's what the scriptures say. He's going to punish evildoers. And as long as you continue to do evil, you will be a part of that group that he's going to punish. Ephesians 5, 5 through 7 says, For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. If you're here this week in Daytona Beach during spring break to lust, get drunk, to flip off the preacher with their middle finger, to mock the preaching of the gospel, you're a partaker with them. You're on your way to hell. You're a son or daughter of disobedience and the wrath of God abides on you. And no amount of shaking your head is going to change the facts. It's going to change the truth. You can deny it till you're blue in the face. The facts are the facts. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. You know what Jesus said? He said, go and sin no more lest they worse thing come upon you. You know, there's many professing Christians I've met this week so far. They claim to be Christians while they're walking around half naked. They claim to be Christians while they're swearing their speech so badly, they're overly drunk. They are those who have filthy words coming out of their mouth. They are those who are cheering on pot smoking and fornication. But they call themselves Christians. You are deluded, you are deceived, you are blind, miserable, wretched, and naked if you think you're a Christian in the midst of your filthiness. The Bible says, therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. You hear that? Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And then receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. You know, in the parable of the sower, there are four different grounds. The seed was the same in every single instance. The word of God was pure and whole in every single instance in the parable of the sower. But the grounds were different. There was a hard-hearted ground. There was a thorny ground. There was a ground that didn't have its roots go down deep. And there was a good ground. I wonder how many of you here have good ground in their hearts. I wonder how many of you have good ground in their hearts. I don't want to say very few. Very few. Yet I still preach the truth to you. I still preach the goodness and severity of God to you that you might be saved that you might have eternal life. And don't be deceived to think eternal life is going to church, or eternal life is praying a sinner's prayer, or eternal life is being baptized, or eternal life means you read your Bible or pray at night, or you send a sinner's prayer and Jesus into your heart. That's not true. Eternal life, according to the words of Jesus in John 17, 3, is knowing God the Father and the one he has sent. That's what eternal life is. And Jesus said, now by this, you know that you know him. Now keep in mind, eternal life knowing him. Now by this, you know that you know him. If, there's that big word there, if, no, I don't think so. If you keep his commandments. He that says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth 
is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly, the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know we are in him. So how do you know you know him? How do you know you have eternal life? If you're keeping the commandments of God. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 5 through 7, God is light. Or this is the message we heard from him and declare unto you. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. You say you know God, you say you have fellowship with God, but you're walking in darkness, you're walking in sin, you're a liar. You don't know God. If you know God, you know His character. You know His character is holy, holy, holy. And He hates sin and loves righteousness. And if you know God, you'll hate the things He hates and love the things He loves. For Hebrews 1.9, this is about Jesus. He loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Yet most of you, even those who are professing to be Christians, you engage in, day in and day out, the very things that Christ despises, that Christ hates. You engage in, day in and day out, the very things that Christ died to free you from. The very things that Christ was beaten and bruised and crucified for, to save you from, to deliver you from, to destroy in your life, you engage in day in and day out. You laugh at the things that God hates by watching your filthy movies, by listening to your filthy music. The things that Christ hates, you laugh at. And then many of you will call yourself a Christian. If you're listening to gangster rap music or country music or rock and roll music, you listen to the very things that God despises, that God hates. You put them in your ears day in and day out. The very things that God hates. The old saying is true, garbage in, garbage out. You listen to garbage, you watch garbage, your life is going to be full of garbage. But if you want to be a pure person, you allow only pure things into your heart and mind. Only pure things you allow in your heart and mind. And then you'll have purity in your life. Then you'll walk in the light as he's in the light. Then you'll know God because you're keeping his commandments. But those who don't keep his commandments are deceived. They're deluded. They don't know God. First Peter chapter 2 verses 24 and 25 says, talking about Jesus Christ who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you are healed for you are like sheep going astray but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls now it's obviously talking about Christians those who keep God's commandments but it could be talking about you you could be delivered from your sin if you'll forsake it and trust in the one who bore your sins in his own body on the tree. That we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness. Those of you who know about this doctrine of the cross, this doctrine of the resurrection, you don't know God. If you haven't died to sin and started living for righteousness, you don't know God. If you haven't died to sin and started living for righteousness, you're still a sheep who's astray going after your sins, then you don't know the great shepherd. So that if you know the great shepherd, if you're one of his sheep, you'll know his voice, and you'll follow him. But if you don't follow him, you don't know his voice, and therefore you're not one of his sheep. And you know something I want to... The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. But what I want to say he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement He's for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like that. sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Now obviously, the fact that Christ died on the cross, the fact that he rose from the grave, the, the fact that Christ loved the whole world, that he died for them on the cross, is not applicable to everybody. The benefits of the cross are only available to those who will stop their sin, who will give up their sin, put their full faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and begin to live a life of obedience to Him.
to him. That's the only one who will take part in the benefits that the cross offers are those who forsake their sins. So Jesus died Christ dying like, on the cross, God however, loving the whole so world, does not mean out, your sins are automatically and unconditionally forgiven. Not true. Well, did, well, there is conditions to God's forgiveness. There are not conditions to Christ dying for you. That's a, that's a God did that unconditionally. Therefore, God showed his unconditional love for the ungodly by sending his son to die on the cross, but in offering all the ungodly, all sinners, eternal life. Yes, you're a sinner. You need to repent, though, sinner. Put some more clothes on, and your potty now, and you're right with God. Where are thine accusers? So it's not automatic for you to be forgiven. Just because you know about Jesus, because you've heard about him dying for you on the cross, just because you go to a building you call church, just because you've been taking some water, does not make you a Christian. Does not mean your sins are forgiven. Does not mean you're cleansed. Now, when you said that all of us are, are sinners, the Bible says, if the wicked turn from their wickedness and do what is lawful and right, they shall live because of it. But if the righteous turns from his righteousness and does what is was wicked to sin again, he shall die because of it. Friends, we don't want you to end up in hell. We want you to have eternal life. But you know Christ. But you know God. Christ is the only way to eternal life. There's no other name given under him that which man can be saved except for Jesus Christ. He's the only way, the only truth, the only life. Your Romans, Catholicism will not help you. Your Buddhism and Hinduism will not help you. Your Lutheranism will not help you. Only Jesus Christ can help you. Only Jesus Christ can cleanse you of your sins. The Bible says, lose yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn the good. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient. There's the problem right there. Most of you are not willing. Most of you are not obedient. Most of you couldn't care less about Jesus Christ. Most of you couldn't care less about what he did for you on the cross. You want to follow in your sin instead. You want to live a life of ungodliness instead. But the, the grace and mercy of God is offered to you today. The fact that you're still alive and you're in your sins means that God is still being merciful towards you. The fact that you're still alive and God offers you eternal life means God is being patient with you. He's long suffering towards you. Wanting none of you to perish I want the, all of you to have eternal life. The Bible says, Do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But the current with your hardness and your impenitent heart, your unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath. And the revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continuous to doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, on every soul of man who does evil, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Get out of here. No, sir, I'm not going anywhere. Oh. No. This is called America. We give you education and constitutional law. Freedom of religion and freedom of speech allows you to be on public property. If you don't like it, find a private beach somewhere. It's a public beach, a public sidewalk. If you don't like it, move to China. If you don't like it, buy your own private island, your own private beach. But here in America, we still have freedom of religion and freedom of speech. And I'm going to preach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to you as long as I'm able to do it. As long as I have breath in my lungs. And it's 
for your own good. Most of you don't care. Most of you don't realize that this is for your good, but it is for your good. That you might be saved. That you might not end up in a lake of fire. The Bible says, do not be deceived. The unrighteous do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. I was a demon, sinner. I was a demon. I was a demon and a Mohammedan prophet. And they're both going to hell. Allah is a demon, Mohammedan prophet, and they're both going to hell. So as I was saying, you need to repent of your sins. Do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. If you're on that list, you're in great danger. If you're a fornicator having sex outside of marriage, you are unrighteous and you will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're an idolater, and you serve a God other than the God of the Bible, then you are unrighteous, you are ungodly, and you are currently not on your way to the kingdom of God. You are currently on your way to hell. If you are a adulterer, the Bible says it stems in a little bit more than the actual you know, married man or married wife committing sin against each other. Adultery, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you commit adultery already with her in your heart. So all you men lusting after women, all you women lusting after men out here today in the Turner Beach in their embodied clothing with their shirts off, wearing their bikinis, you need to realize that you are adulterer. You are adulterer. And you are currently on your way to hell. All you poor watchers are currently on your way to hell. You need to repent. All you perverts out here today who want to lust and fornicate, hey mom, you are what currently up? on your way to hell. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch that sexual assault, sinner. Sexual assault. Don't touch me. I haven't seen you for a while. Well, walk away then, sinner, if you don't like it. Yeah, you are. Look at the way you're dressed. You're exhibit A of a sinner. You're exhibit A. You're a sinner exhibit A. Yeah, it's one of those that sinners stand in the middle of the night. They 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 stand in the middle of the night. I care for you enough to tell you to repent. I care for you enough to drive 12 hours to come out here to tell you to repent. That guy did it a couple days ago, too. It's always God. Acting like an Indian. It's always God. Yeah, you don't have Jesus Christ. You need Jesus Christ. How do you live in India? How do you live in India? What does that mean? What does that mean? I feel like an ad-talk of argument because it's more than he this, right? Why do you know that? I feel like an ad-talk statement. How do you know God isn't real? You don't want God to be real because you're a sinner. Of course sinners don't want God to be real. And then you're someone that they're accountable to. Someone they have to answer to. You need to answer to God. The last of the fall shall say it is hard to reach God. Sinners 
so you got to do out here, man. Yeah, sometimes. I'd rather preach a little bit more gentle, but it's like sometimes it's hard. I know what you mean. There's room for us to give a stronger opinion. Right. The thing I was praying for today is that the Lord would just speak to me unhindered. That's what I did, so that's what the Lord had to speak to him today is harshness. I know. So. I was thinking about that scripture in Revelation 11 about the two witnesses. Mm -hmm. They made Mary and gave gifts to each other because it said they tormented them. Right, tormented them. Right. Because of what they were saying. Because what they were saying, yeah. Why else would they be tormented? <laughs> right. Well, also, in addition to that, it says that whenever they're speaking, there's going to be no water, no rain. We're also being tormented by drought <laughs> and about a lot of other things. Yeah, so that's part of it too, but I think a lot of it has to do with the yes. Blessed is the man who takes not the counsel of the ungodly. If you come up to me and give me advice and you're dressed in a bikini or you're half naked, I'm not going to take your advice. You're a sinner. I don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I walk in the counsel of the godly. So let's, let's talk about why there's atheists in the world. In fact, there really are no real atheists in the world. But there's those who call themselves atheists because they don't want the God to submit to. That's what Romans 1 says. They suppress the truth in unrighteousness. See, everybody here has enough truth to know that God exists. They have enough truth to know they shouldn't be sitting. God has put it upon their heart. He's given them a conscience. The law of God's written upon their heart, testifying to them that they are sinners. Your conscience accuses you when you do wrong, and it excuses you when you do right. That's a godly function. God gave you your conscience. God wrote His law upon your heart. And so you have enough evidence, enough proof, enough truth to realize that God does exist. But you suppress the truth you have in unrighteousness. Because you want to be fornicators, you want to be drunkards, you want to be porn monsters, you want to be lustful, you want to be liars and thieves, you want to be covetous, you want to be homosexual or sodomite, you want to dishonor your parents. That's why you don't want God to exist. That's why. Yeah. 
I'm talking to everybody, not just you, sir.
that shit was going to cost you or so in the end. Cause it wasn't a profit event. And the game's a whole world. of the 